It took the last couple of days to flip this over, actually the last week, to flip this over and get a few coats of varnish on the outside here. And I actually have a couple of coats of varnish on the inside. I like to get some of that done before I start doing my finish work on my gunnels so I don't get them too banged up. Um, so if, uh, you know, you know, we have a certain series of, uh, way of series of things that we need to do here because we're doing it on DVD. And uh, so we gotta kind of accommodate that whole process. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you finish off your gunnels before you take care of your bottom, that's fine. Just set it up on Soul Horses, wrap uh, carpeting or something to that, uh, or something like that around it and make sure that the varnish on your gunnels is good and dry before you do that or else you know, every place where the carpet hits it, it's going to make impressions. All right, so I promised that I would show you how to do a gunnel cap. And I hesitated, and I didn't hesitate because I didn't think you could do it. I hesitate because I'm not sure everybody has what they need to make a uh, gunnel cap. Now, you know, typically we would either bend the gunnel cap on this or, you know, do it in some kind of a decorative fashion. Um, but the, the easiest way to do it, to come up with a really nice strong gunnel cap, is to essentially resaw wood. Now, um, this wood here has been, this is ash and it's going to look great on there and it's been resawn and it's been planed down to a quarter of an inch now because of the curve of the boat you have to remember that we're doing this dvd not just for this boat but also for a 14 footer and for the melon seed and those are all much wider curves that come out and around so without getting too deep into the design aspect of this you have to understand that you know, if it, if it starts at a point and comes out wider, that the wider that is, the more it strays from the center point, the wider the actual piece of wood needs to be in order to cap your gunnel. So this, this is the reason why I hesitated. This particular piece of wood is six inches wide. And for those of you at home that have a 10 inch table saw, this is as wide as you're gonna get it, right? You're gonna get it three inches on one pass, flip the board three inches on the other pass, uh, and then you'll be able to split it and plane it down. So six inches is as wide as it goes. Now, even with that, I am only, I'm gonna have to do this gunnel in three pieces. Now on boats that splay out even more, like the 14 foot or the melon seed, um, you may have to do it in four pieces, right? So, but that was no reason for me not to show you how to do this. So again, you know, like I said before, what I'm about to show you is um, completely optional. It, does, it certainly doesn't add anything to the boat. And one of the big reasons I like it, though, is because when it caps this off, it seals the two, the inner and the outer gunnel, in the actual core of the boat. And, you know, it just kind of ties everything in together nicely. So if you got the time and you got the table saw, I definitely recommend doing it. Okay, so let's get started. And in order to get started, um, you're going to have to basically lay out some pieces. So I know already, I, uh, I've laid out my first piece, take my second piece, I lay it out here, making sure that it completely covers the gunnel. And then lastly, I go down here and I take the smaller piece and I'll lay it out here, okay? So by doing that, I know that these three pieces will completely cap my gunnel. Now it's just a matter of starting in one location and working your way back. So I chose to start up here by the breast hook and uh, like many of the other things that we've done that's going to require us to uh, do some scribing here. All right so why don't we get up a little bit closer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right so taking my compass here I'm going to be scribing this up into my breast hook and if you remember the breast hook we feathered that down so that it was a quarter of an inch. I think I even said when we did that, that that's because this was coming. So we just basically put this up against that and we line this up so that it completely covers the gunnel, both inside and out, um, and gives us room to scribe down there. And I'm gonna take this and basically get my angle. Okay. So I don't have to draw a whole line. That should be enough for me to go over to the chop saw and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that down right now so that this should butt right up against that. All 
All right, so what I've got now is this board is flush up against my breast hook. Uh, and as I look down, I can run my finger underneath each side here. And I know I've got uh, plenty of room to go ahead and take a pencil and mark underneath that, which I'm going to do right now. All right, so just simply grab a nice sharp pencil. And the key here is don't let the thing move around while you're working. And scribe underneath. And then the same thing on the outside. There you go. So I got two really nice lines going down there. And you can see, obviously, it's the shape of the gunner. So I'm going to go over to my band saw, or you're going to use your jigsaw with a nice fine tooth blade. Cut it very slowly. <coughs> I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to cut proud of the line probably about an eighth of an inch. You know, don't, don't try to get too tricky with this, because uh, you're going to have to sand it. No matter what you do, you're going to have to sand it. So I'm going to cut proud of that line about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to do that all the way down, and after it's all glued and set in, then I'll just take a, you know, a trim router with a flush cut bit and go down it, or even you know, maybe a belt sander or, you know, a rasp and a hand sand. Uh, it'll be real easy to get off. So, um, again, after you scribe it, give it about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to go give this a cut. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good cut. And so what you need to do is line it back up here with the breast hook and then run your fingers all the way down and make sure that you get just a little bit of meat left over on each side. And I do. I got a little cute, cut it a little close in places, but I got enough left there to sand. So I'm gonna go ahead and temporarily clamp this down. So I need this big piece. And again, take it down about as far as I can make it go. And just kind of play with the angle on this thing till you can get the most you can get out of it. All right, so I've got just about a little over an eighth of an inch here. So if I move it any more that way, I'm going to lose it. Um, I'm right up to the edge here, so I've got nothing left to play with down here. And so that'll leave me about two and a half feet on the end, and it's fine, easy to take care of. So now I'm going to open this up a little bit because my gap's wider. And scribe a line. All right, so the angles are pretty good between these two. Very good, actually. And I still have plenty of room to do my scribing all the way around. So I'm just going to take a couple of clamps and hold this piece in place now. Put one there. One here towards the middle. That should be enough. And now grab a pencil and start tracing. Well, that went pretty well. Nice and tight up here. Now obviously this, there's a difference in you know where the grains match and slight variation in color and that's you know that's just part of the game. So you gotta decide how important all that is to you. You know if it's really important to you that it all matches up again you're gonna have to really pick your lumber out and and uh, when you make your cuts, check the grains and all that and match them up. For me, I love wood. I love the way wood looks. I love the way that it's natural. Um, so I let it be what it's going to be. And I do also realize that once I varnish all this, it all kinds of starts to blend together. So this is a pretty good fit. I'm going to go ahead and put a few clamps down here. Get that nice and tight. Again, making sure that I get an overhang all the way down, which I apparently do. Now that we got a nice tight fit there, I'm just going to clamp that down. So the next thing I want to do for this piece is I want to cut it so that it actually drops down, so that when I make my lines, I'm making it on a board that's sitting flat. Now, uh, this is not going to be a fine joinery kind of thing for a couple of reasons. First off. I already got to fill it here with the transom knee meat, so um, even if I did do a fine cut there, I, gotta have, I would have to back cut it in order to fit it in anyway, and the reality is, is I'm just going to use epoxy and I'm going to do a fillet like we've done everywhere else. 
Uh, so the best way to do this is take your pencil and go between the board and the transom here and make a mark so that you know pretty much where that's going to go. And then I'm going to have to go underneath here and make a mark right about here to tell me where that notch is going to be. All right. So I have got a couple of lines now which ought to do the trick. And this is one of those places where I said, you know, chances are mistakes will be made. So I have one line here, which is following the transom. I've got another line here, which will make the notch that we need to make. So if I just extend those two logically, I'm going to end up with something that looks something like that. So I'm going to take that over to the bandsaw and I'm going to go ahead and cut this area out and just extend that right off to the edge there. That'll just be excess that we'll end up cutting off anyway. Well, I'm real happy with the angles that I have on everything here. Um, but I came up what looks to be about, well, I'm gonna say maybe a little over a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch long cause I can't push it down. Um, so rather than mess with this too much because I am happy with it, I'm gonna go back to the angle I have here and just take off a saw blade and this thing should drop right down in. Yeah, well that little saw blade took care of it. And uh, it's looking like I got plenty here. I got just barely, just, just a little, 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 little bit of overhang here. And then I got plenty of overhang everywhere else. Down here, uh, I got about a sixteenth of an inch gap. That's not going to be a problem because I'm going to go ahead and fill that in with uh, wood flour anyway. So I'll put a little bead of wood flour down here and down here and uh, smooth everything in. So the only thing left to do now is to go underneath and scribe out my lines. I'm pretty happy with that. Got plenty of the sand all the way down each side. Yeah, I like the way it's coming up here in the knee. And I'll just do a little filler right here and right there. Keep it all nice and tidy. Uh, and then what I'll do right here where this meets the actual transom knee is I'll just put a nice clean little fillet right down in there. And then when we varnish it, it'll all come together very nicely. All right, so I'm just gonna temporarily clamp that down. All I'm going to do at this point um, is cut pieces for the other side, do the exact same thing that I did over here. Uh, but I'm also going to mix up some epoxy, the same way you've seen me do it now half a dozen times anyway. Uh, mix some epoxy. I'm going to paint the top side of the gunnels. I'm going to paint the underside of this and I'm going to put a little thickened epoxy on there and then these spring clamps I'm going to have one of these about every you know four or five inches or so. So I'm going to break out the milk crate with all the spring clamps in it and um, Start to glue these things down. Mm -hmm.